What's up guys, our September Patreon rewards are finally available. If you're interested in picking up a Full Art Brainstorm or Muldrotha the Gravetide, you can check out all the details at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's up guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode. Today we are opening up a pack of Ravnica Allegiance. Obviously a relatively new pack. Uh, we've, I guess in the last year or so, uh, been introduced to Ravnica Allegiance and it's been a really, really great set. Uh, there's a lot of really awesome stuff in here. In terms of standard value, there's actually a good bit as well. Uh, of course, shock lands are a pretty pretty great pull, regardless. Uh, any kind of land like that is always going to be amazing. Uh, but there are also quite a number of really good creatures, planeswalkers, things like that, uh, that hopefully we get to see as we open this pack. So, as always, we'll go through this as if we're drafting it. Uh, so, our first card here is Fairy Duelist. So, it's a 1-2 for 1 and a blue. It does have flash, so you can play it at instant speed, and it also has flying, which is great. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus two, minus zero until the end of the turn. So what I actually really, really love about this card is it's sort of a combat trick on a stick uh, in, the, in terms that, first of all, you can play it in its speed. It is only two mana. And you can kind of neuter one of your opponent's creatures a little bit, uh, and then ideally be able to either block with this or block with another creature after you've done so. Uh, and so it's actually a really, really nice common to start off the pack. It's a pretty good card. Obviously, it's not amazing. It is only a two mana, one, two flyer. Uh, but honestly, on its own, without that negative two, uh, negative zero, it's not a bad card. Uh, and so actually, I, I'm actually a pretty big fan of this card. I don't necessarily think it's first pick material, but obviously we'll see what the rest of the pack holds. <laughs> uh, Gore Clan Wrecker is a 2-2 for three and a red. Uh, it does have Riot, which is the gruel mechanic. Uh, so when it enters the battlefield, you either get to choose to give it haste or give it a plus one, plus one counter, making it a 3-3. Three, three. So it's either a 2-2 two, two haster or a 3-3 three, three, uh uh, just regular creature. In this case, it obviously has Menace as well, so it can't be blocked unless it's blocked by two or more creatures. So it's a little bit evasive in that regard. Uh, this is a very, very Gruul-style card. It encourages that aggression, uh, which is exactly what Gruul does. If you don't know, by the way, Gruul is red and green. It's that color combo. Uh, and they tend to be... The, the Riot mechanic is a very Gruul uh, style thing where it's really pushing that aggression as much as possible. Uh, and I like that a lot. Menace helps with that quite a lot as well. Uh, my only issue with this is it's a little bit expensive. However, you're getting a lot uh, on one card. That's a lot of keywords on one card. And worth noting, if you do give something Riot uh, on top of its original Riot trigger, if you have uh, Rhythm of the Wild or something that gives all of your creatures Riot, for instance, you get two procs off of that. So you actually get two Riot triggers. You can actually build and build. Not that you should plan for that. I just want to point that out uh, because that is an interesting kind of me uh, mechanic with that. But Regardless, I, I prefer the Fairy Duelist. That's just kind of my view. Uh, I tend to lean more towards that Trixie kind of side. Uh, but this is a very aggressive card. Very, very solid uh, four drop. It's not amazing, but it's good. Uh, Impassioned Orator is a 2-2 for one and a white. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. Uh, this is very Selesnia Tokens-esque. It focuses on the green-white, play a bunch of creatures, and then hopefully gain a decent amount of life off of that. Uh, we actually saw this in a couple of constructed decks that were very focused on that life gain strategy, and it was fine in those decks. Uh, and I don't think it's bad. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2, so it's a bear with a little bit of upside. Incidental life gain, I'm perfectly fine with. Uh, but I don't think it's a great first pick by any means. It is just a 2-2 two, two for 2 with a few extra points of life. I don't think that makes it good enough. Uh, Prying Eyes is an instant for four and two blue. Draw four cards, then discard two cards. Uh, so what I love about this, one, you're getting you're getting to see four cards for only the price of one, uh, which is pretty awesome. You're getting to see a lot of your deck. Uh, again, in limited, you're probably only going to see about 40 cards uh, in your deck. You're, you, you usually don't want to go over 40 cards. Uh, and so four cards is actually... 
I mean, a tenth of your deck. That's pretty solid. Uh, and so, yes, you do discard two, but that's fine. Uh, you get to choose which, and obviously, uh, it's not just the four cards that you drew. It's whatever cards are in your hand as well. So you've got a lot of options there. The fact that this is instant speed is what makes this really, really good. Uh, you can leave up Fairy Duelist. You can leave up instants of any kind. Uh, and then if nothing happens, or if maybe you have a counter spell and you don't find something you want to counter, you just play this at the end of your opponent's turn and all of a sudden you're well set up for your next turn. Uh, and so I really do like this. I think I, I think I like the Fairy Duelist better. I lean towards creatures a little bit uh, just because creatures are a little bit more important in my opinion in draft. However, this is a very powerful card. Normally draw spells, not the best uh, in limited. They're fine, but they're not the best. However, drawing four is pretty good. Uh, you're digging through a lot of your decks. So it's worth noting that. I would still take the Duelist over it, but I do really like this card. Uh, Sagittars, Sagittars, I hope I'm saying that correctly, Volley, uh, is an instant for two and a green. Destroy target creature with flying, and it deals one damage to each creature with flying your opponent's control. So this is very much a sideboard card. Uh, a lot of times you won't know if your, your opponent's deck has flyers. Uh, generally speaking, they may have one or two, and in that case, it's probably worth playing, but... A lot of times they may not and so in that instance this can be a very dead card uh if you happen to be in green though and you see this mid to late pack and there's just not a better pick in that pack definitely a good solid sideboard tech kind of card it, it allows you to deal with those flyers as you need to and that's exactly what you want to do so in that case very good otherwise not a first pick by any means uh, Noxious Grudion, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, is a 2-2 for 2 and a black with Death Touch. Pretty straightforward card. Death Touch is very, very good. Uh, excuse me, and limited. Uh, just because it's really, really difficult to play around unless you have a removal spell of some kind. Uh, and even then, it doesn't feel great to destroy like a 2-2 two -two, uh, with, you know, your really, really great burn spell or something like that. Uh, just because you have to get rid of it. I mean, it is a death touch creature. It's going to answer something unless you can deal with it first. Uh, and so it really does demand a removal spell or some kind of trade. Uh, and generally speaking, that falls in your favor. That being said, this is not a high priority pick. It is just a 2-2 and for three mana, that's not amazing. Uh, yes, the death touch is fine, but it's not forwarding your game plan quite as much as it's just kind of stalling uh, the opponent's. Which again is fine. That, that sometimes works very, very well. Uh, and this, I think, is a playable three drop, but I don't think it's necessarily one that I would pick up uh, early in the draft. <coughs> Excuse me. Summary Judgment uh, is an instant for one and a white. It deals three damage to target tapped creature. Uh, you can play this with the addendum. So if you cast this during your main phase, it deals five damage to that creature instead. So addendum is the Azorius mechanic. It forces you to play during your own main phase, which I think is very, very weird. Uh, I, I said from the start, that's not my favorite way of doing it, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, in this case, dealing five damage to a creature is great. It does have to be tapped though. Uh, which is kind of important. There are a few cards in here with like Vigilance and things like that. Uh, the Azorius Knight, I believe, comes to mind. Uh, but regardless, this is a very, very powerful, very, very efficient spell. And I do like it. I think it's better than Fairy Duelist, uh, definitely. Uh, just because it's a pretty solid removal spell. Yes, it's conditional, but generally speaking, it's going to be able to hit something. Uh, and so I, I really like that. I think it's definitely the pick so far. <clears throat> Uh, Cerulee Caretaker is a 0-3 for one green with Defender, uh, so it obviously can attack, and you can tap it and tap an untapped creature you control to add one mana of any color. Uh, this is just your standard fixer. It's kind of bad. Uh, it's a lot of investment to get one mana. Uh, you're tapping two creatures. Don't really love that. Uh, it does fix your mana, which is worth saying, and it does stall in the very early turns of the game, uh, which is fine on its own right, but generally this is not a card that's really on my radar unless I happen to find myself in a very, very full multicolor deck, like four color, five color, something ridiculous like that. But generally, I don't think that this is a very good card. Uh, Chillbringer is a 3-3 three, three, uh, flyer for four and a blue, and when it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. It does not untap during its controller's next untap step. So I'll be honest, I think this beats out Summary Judgment for me. Uh, while Summary Judgment is removal, conditional removal, uh, this is a very, very great tempo play. Uh, not only are you getting something on board that's an evasive threat, but you're also tapping down a, a threat on the opponent's side of the field 
uh, at the exact same time, and that's really, really good. Uh, that's a lot of tempo swing in your favor. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and so this is honestly a very, very solid common. I think it's one of the best commons in the set, uh, and it's definitely the one that I'm going to go for right now. Uh, Rebel Reading uh, is a sorcery for three and a red. Destroy target land and scry to. Uh, land destruction in limited tends to be very, very bad. Uh, a lot of times you're just going to find yourself up against a lot of basic lands. It's not great to uh, to destroy a basic land, especially on turn four. It's a little slow. Uh, that scry two is okay, but it's still not amazing. Uh, it doesn't make it playable in my opinion. And so honestly, this is just a card that I'm never going to look at. Uh, maybe, maybe there is a sideboard uh, tech plan for this, but very, very rarely would I ever play this. <clears throat> Our first uncommon is Trollbred Guardian. Uh, it's a 5-5 five, five for 4 and a green, so already not bad. Uh, you can adapt to this for 2 and a green, so if this has no 1-1 one, one counters on it, you can put two 1-1 one, one counters on it for 2 and a green. Uh, and then each creature you control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it has Trample. So this is a very, very Simic-style card. The adapt mechanic was uh, devoted to the Simic guild, uh, Simic being the green and blue guild. Uh, where you really get to pump up a lot of your stuff. Uh, it's really, really cool. Playing with those 1-1 one, one counters is really fun. Moving them around in a lot of cases you can do uh, to hopefully proc a lot of adapt triggers. Uh, and honestly, a 5-5 five, five for 5 is fine anyway, but that adapt 2 makes it even better. Not only that, every creature that you have with a 1-1 one, one counter gains trample. So this has synergy, uh, so, so, so much synergy with a lot of the Simic guild. Uh, and a lot of the cards that you're going to get there. And so honestly, I think this on raw power level alone does beat Chillbringer. Uh, but this is a very, very strong card. Just a lot of stuff that can go on here. Obviously, dies to a kill spell as anything else. But uh, I think this is a must answer for sure. That trample can be really, really backbreaking for an opponent. <clears throat> uh, Junk Troller is a 0-6 for 4 mana, again with Defender, so it can't attack. Uh, and you can tap it and put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Uh, I don't love this. Um, there are instances where that would come in handy, to be honest. Uh, but it's really few and far between. You cannot count on it. And this does not win you the game. It's literally just a wall. Uh, and that's fine. Like, it, it stalls, but it's not a great stall, to be honest. Uh, and so, honestly, there's not much to say other than I don't think that this is a very playable card, uh, except for maybe very, very rare occasions. Uh, we have a double card here, so Incubation uh, and Incongruity. Uh, incubation, you can either pay green or blue, uh, and it's a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library, reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That's perfectly fine. It's a dig through your deck kind of card. I like that. Uh, incongruity, one, a green, and a blue for an instant exile target creature. That creature's controller creates a 3-3 three, three green frog lizard creature token. Uh, that's pretty good, honestly. Uh, that deals with bombs, deals with indestructible bombs, which is very, very important. Uh, and it is at instant speed. Yes, they get a 3-3 three, three in return. Generally speaking, if you're dealing with something huge, though, you'll take a 3-3 three, three over that any day. Uh, on the flip side... Uh, you can technically do this to your own creatures as a bit of an upgrade or a surprise kind of a block or something like that. Uh, and so there is an instance uh, few and far between, but there are instances where maybe this is worth it to do on your own creature. Just a thought. Uh, however, you don't get both of these cards. I just want to point that out. You pick one or the other. This does not have the intertwine mechanic or the 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 wh whatever it was in Dragon's Maze. I can't remember. Uh, and so you only get to pick one of these, but both of them are actually pretty good. Uh, incongruity definitely better i don't know that it's better than the guardian uh i'm a little bit on the fence about that uh, i like the fact that you get two cards for one uh but i think what we'll do is we'll keep them together for now and see what our rare is which is revival and revenge so another split card uh revival is sorcery for either uh a white or a black or another white and a black you can combine that however you'd like a uh, return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from a graveyard to the battlefield not amazing and limited. Generally speaking, that's not going to win you the game. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can certainly do some cool stuff, but it, I don't think it's great. Uh, Revenge is a sorcery for four, a white, and a black. Double your life total and then target opponent, opponent while loses half of their life rounded up. Again, I'm not that sold on that. Uh, I do think that it's a win more kind of card. Uh, a lot of times I'd rather for six mana play something that's just going to straight up win the game. 
and so I, I'm not as sold on this. Uh, maybe my experience is different than others, but I feel like this is not going to be the best card in a deck. Uh, and so I'm kind of kind of up for passing that. We do have an Azori, or an Orzhov Guildgate, excuse me, enters the battlefield tapped and does tap for white or black. These are really good to pick up uh, mid-pack, generally speaking. You do want to pick them up pretty early if you need them, but uh, you don't have to first pick them by any means. So for me, it's kind of between these two, uh, and I think the safer pick is the Guardian. Uh, I just think it's a really, really solid card. This is definitely good, uh, but it does kind of put you into two colors right away, uh, because Incongruity is really the card that I'm looking to cast here, not so much the Incubation. I think Incubation is fine, but uh, Incongruity is really the one that I want. I think as a bit of a safe pick, I'm going to go Trollbred Guardian. Uh, feel free, of course, to disagree in the comment section. I'm happy to talk about that. But uh, that's just, again, I think the safest pick, and I do think it's a powerhouse card. So that's what I'm going to go for. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Back episode.